And right now, if you think about how much we rely on technology, it may astound you. And joining us this morning is research scientist Dr. Michael uh, Huseman. Is that how he said it? Yeah, that's correct. Doctor? Uh, he's also the author of the book Technofix, Why, Sa Why Technology Won't Save Us or the Environment. It's great to have you here, Doctor. Okay, thank you. Let's set, set a benchmark here. You, you, you question the belief that technology can save humanity. To define what you mean by that in your new book. Well, you know, we have all these, these problems right now, environmental pollution, we have global climate change, we have human overpopulation, and uh, all of these problems are created by technology, actually. And what do we want to do? We want to apply more technology to solve them, and we call this in our book, we call it Technofix. These Technofixes, uh, we believe, are not really a solution because they will cause other unintended side effects and consequences. So we believe really that the best solution is uh, small-scale local technology, environmentally sustainable, and they, they will address the root cause of the problem and thereby provide lasting solutions. Let's set a benchmark. What are the biggest environmental problems facing us right now? Well, I personally would say global warming is for sure one of the biggest problems, and then, of course, persistent organic chemicals that accumulate everywhere where in, in our bodies and in the animals' bodies worldwide uh, are definitely very significant. So then uh, how problems. do we solve those problems? I mean, some people have talked about carbon taxing. And, and so are we talking about changes in personal behavior? Is that the real solution, not some mm. new technology? Well, ultimately, it has to be a combination between personal behavior and new technology. The technology has to change. It has to be an environmentally sustainable technology. Some technology that we call it green chemistry, for instance, a green mm. technology, where the chemicals are biodegradable. And, and not dangerous to the environment. But at the same time, we also have to change our habits, our values and behaviors. We cannot have you know, consumption, this endless consumption, economic growth, and also not uh, endless uh, population growth. Of course, that's bad for the environment as well. So now that we have billions of computers and billions of smartphones and you know, hundreds of millions of tablets, in the world. That's an example of, I mean, there, that technology has to go somewhere, right? It's creating a new stream of pollution. Uh, exactly. I'm, while I'm not a specialist in this, I have heard, I mean, <clears throat> not only pollution, we need rare earth metals, I believe, for cell phones, mm -hmm. so that's a, that's a problem, but then also the disposal. Can you imagine the disposal of billions of these devices? This must be quite a challenge. So I don't know whether this is an environmentally sustainable technology, <laughs> really. <laughs> so we live in a pretty tech-savvy community. Seattle is one of the most right. wired, one of the most educated. I want you to talk right to the people at home in terms of what can we do as individuals to help solve some of these environmental problems when it comes to the, the way we use technology. Well, I think one, one problem, one, one way to, uh, to become active and more critical is to, to be critical of any new technology. Do not believe that all these new technologies that are advertised on the media will be your, the solution to your problems because it has been actually shown that people are not really that much more happy with all these technologies. So that's one way to be more critical about technology. But then also to, to try to do small scale technologies, local technologies. For instance, what you just said, what can we do? Local organic agriculture. This is an example of an environmentally sustainable technology and a local technology. So everybody can eat local organic mm -hmm. food if they wanted to. So that's one way to do it. Of course, bicycling is a sustainable technology. Walking is yeah. a sustainable technology, sure. if you want Living to call it. Living closer to where you Cl work. Exactly. Yeah. There are all these solutions that, that we can easily do. Actually, this is, a, this is basically the message of this book. We do not need all this high-tech solution. We can do it right here <laughs> by ourselves. They have done it before, the Industrial Revolution. But yeah. before the Industrial Revolution, there were not these problems so we can do it again. There is not really any problem. So I'm pretty optimistic, actually, that we can do it. It's interesting. Um, you know, I grew up on an organic farm, right. and, and uh, it's interesting that up until about, oh, I don't know, 80 years ago, that was the way it was. And then technology took over and chemicals and everything, and now we're getting back to that. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So there's no reason why we could go, couldn't go back to that. Yeah. Do you have hope for, for solving issues like global warming? Because we still have emerging economies like China and India that are pumping massive amounts of, of carbon. So are we still into the air. 
Well, of course. Uh, I, I myself actually work in researching global warming and biofuels, so I be, do believe in biofuels. Mm -hmm. However, the, the problem with biofuels and all renewable energy is if you do it on a very large scale, there are also environmental consequences. If you have windmills all over, if you have solar panels all over, if you cut all the forests for biomass energy, mm -hmm. there will be also environmental consequences. So mm -hmm. I do have hope, but we have to be careful not to just uh, plaster, you know, millions of square miles with pol solar panels. I think people wouldn't like that. Yeah, you're going to be talking uh, at Town Hall Seattle, right? Right, correct. What, what's the most common thing that people ask you when they talk to you at events like this? Well, they, they ask basically, what can I do as a person? Basically, yeah. what you already asked me. So mm -hmm. I, I think uh, looking for simple solutions, low-tech solutions, I believe is a a long term. Well, it's great to I meet guess. you, Dr. Michael Husserman. Thank you so much for being okay, on the show. Great. Thank yeah, you. and uh, as I mentioned, he will be at Town Hall Seattle tonight, beginning at 7 30. The doors open at 6 30. The event ends at 9 o'clock. Town Hall is at 8th Avenue in Seneca, in uh, just above downtown Seattle. Tickets are just five bucks. So thanks very much, Doctor. All right, uh, as we continue right here, some people, you know, they want to be.